So this is religion under Edward VI, or as he is also known, uh, the boy king. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down year by year, and then I'm going to say the impact these religious changes they had. So in 1547, there was the royal visitations right at the beginning, in which commissions were sent to examine the, the state of the clergy and the church doctrine, and all Episcopal authority was, um, was paused until these visitations ended. This was more neutral rather than their Catholic or Protestant. So it was more of a, let's just see where the state of the country is. Let's just see how it's going. And maybe we'll go from there. Then that same year, 1547, he, in the, he published, the, not him, but the Book of Homilies and Paraphrases was published, in which modeled sermons and summaries of the New Testament were required to be placed in every church. This was Protestant. So yeah, you'll, you'll see, but overall, the, um, the reign of Edward is more Protestant than Catholic. So, yeah. so that was the book of homilies and paraphrases. Next is a royal injunction, in which the clergy were required to now preach in English with an English Bible and Protestant literature. Anything superstitious in the churches themselves were, uh, was banned. You can, you can have it. Then the Chantries Act, this was passed in 1546 under Henry VIII, but it didn't come into effect until 1547 with Edward. And all this meant that the Act of Dissolution was revived and now the prayers for the dead were, were condemned. So Chantries are like these little houses like in cemeteries and things, not in cemeteries, yeah. They were like relating to dead people, so if someone died, you could go there and pray for them. And under the, uh, Edward, this meant that you couldn't do that anymore. So you could you could pray, but official prayers for the dead were, were um, condemned. If they caught you doing them, you were in trouble. That was also very Protestant. And then the um, Act of Six Articles was repealed. This was passed uh, also by Henry VIII and was slightly Catholic leaning. So Edward repealed it, therefore making it. Uh, Protestant. And this meant the church was left with no official doctrine. So the church was like, what are we gonna do? There's nothing there, you know. And yeah, that was the most Catholic things that happened. Uh, Protestant, sorry. That was the most Protestant things that happened. That same year, the Treason Act was repealed, which meant the old heresy and censorship laws were removed. And there was more religious freedom. It did get more radical as the, uh, the rain went on, but right now I've noticed though, yeah, you had to be Protestant, but as long as what you did in private was not that bad, you could do it. You could remain Catholic if you wanted to at home, but don't, don't bring it out. For instance, if you want to go to church, you have to do, uh, use the English uh, Bible under the royal injunctions. You have to do the model sermons and the book of uh, homilies and paraphrases. You, you had to follow Protestant doctrine after the, after the, like, at church. You couldn't follow it. You, you could follow it at home, but you didn't have to. Next, 1548. And this is the only Catholic thing Edward ever did, which were the proclamations to dampen Protestant unrest. unrest. So transubstantiation, which was a Catholic policy of, I think it was the bread and the wine, that was still in place and Catholic rites still needed to be ad adhered to. So that was still Catholic. And he kept that. It, he didn't implement anything new. He just kept the, the Catholics and tried to dampen a bit of Protestant unrest. But that was the most Catholic thing he ever did in his reign. Then all images uh, were removed from churches, all of them. This is called iconoclasm, and the um, images were removed. Altars, statues of God, um, statues of saints, the windows were also removed. So also uh, in that same year, we saw 1548, the proclamation saying only authorized clergy could preach. So this meant only authorized clergy could teach, obviously, and this removed a lot of Protestants from being able to impart their sermons because many of them were uneducated and 
otherwise we just go in with the religion and in, in, this is not catholic or protestant this did restrict some on the catholic side but mainly affected protestants so it was like, like kind of in the middle more neutral and anything also the proclamation saying no preaching of the new liturgy was passed that same year to try to control the situation so, like the situation in in england and religious speaking it was a bit messy because Henry had thrown the country to chaos in terms of religion. He like Catholic person, Catholic person. It was back and forth. And now Edward came here and he was he was Protestant, but he he had he had been raised Protestant. Also he, he had a lot of influence of Catherine Parr Protestant. But um yeah he was this Protestant kid. Who came to the throne, and his his uh, chancellors, um, Northumberland and Somerset, they were also Protestant, but he also got some uh, neutral reforms. So people were like, okay, are we Protestant? Are we neutral? Are we Catholic? I don't know. Th there there lies a debate. <laughs> and then the first prayer book was published, uh, written by the Cardinal, which outlined the liturgy, as referred to as to the proclamation saying. No preaching until new liturgy. Well, that wasn't put in place until this came out. So that was more neutral, and now this came out, making the country visually Protestant. And then, 1549. The Book of Common Prayer was now official liturgy under the Act of Uniformity. So this book that was published in the, um, like last year, it was, it was published by the Archbishop Cranmer, and... It was it was liturgy, but it did it wasn't official under the Act of Uniformity. It was so yeah. And also, the laws against clerical marriage were removed, and ex ecclesiastical courts were set up in the king's name. So, as famously stated in the Catholic religion, if you were a priest, you couldn't marry. Edward said, "Eh." So he he let he let them marry and and. Yeah, these ecclesiastical courts where the church were set up in the name of the king. That was really Protestant, as well, as well obviously, as the Act of Uniformity. And the uh, proclamation issuing the destruction of images meant that any image that had not been destroyed in 1548 were now destroyed. More iconoclasm, more of this destruction of religious images and statues, which I get. But I get the theory behind it, but if it's important to a person, um, I don't get the Catholic religion with all the glory and all the statues and stuff. But if it's important to a person, you don't devote yourself fully to it. If it has some meaning to you, like if the object and the statue has some meaning to you, I think you should be able to keep it. I would say that like as an altar, as in like right there. But not destroy it. Because, you know, it's going to make you really unpopular. So this obviously was very Protestant. 1549, everything passed was Protestant. Then we have 1550. So a new reformed ordinal was passed, which meant the, which meant the ceremony that was followed when the clergy was ordained. So this was a more neutral rather than Catholic or Protestant. Well, what this entailed was... Uh, so you got ordained, and there was a ceremony that came after that. So you would have to do the specific ceremony as set out in the new reform ordinal. That's all it was, both for Catholic and Protestant. Although by this point it was mostly Protestant, I think. And removal of stone altars and replace them by wooden, less fancy ones. So all the iconoclasm happened in 1548 and 1549, but then in 1550, they said, okay, all statues are removed, all um, images are removed. Let's just change this massive, glorious stone altar, put away, and bring this simple wood altar, because who needs uh, to be fancy when speaking to God? It's about the connection you feel, it's not about what's in front of you. So, yeah. <laughs> They remove the um, the sun altar just to make it simple. If you have seen pictures of there's a like cartoon I saw, I think it was way back in year eight, 
bearing the Catholic and Protestant Church and the actual pictures of churches. And you can see the, the Catholic Church. A lot of gold, a lot of fancy things, the, um, like the altar, the yeah, everything is so fancy, the robes. And now here comes the Protestant church, which was which is basically simple. You just go to a building with a wooden altar, you just speak to the people. Which I think is closer to what true connection to God feels like. Because um you shouldn't need to have something there to say, oh you're you're going, you're, you're speaking to God, you're speaking to someone. No, 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 you have to feel a connection. and You don't need fancy things to feel a connection. I don't think. 1751, nothing was passed, till, or nothing significant was passed, at least. So that would just ignore 1551. Then 1552, a new treason act was, was, passed, was passed. So in 1547, the old treason act, which uh, removed heresy and censorship laws, that was removed in 1548 meant that it was now an offense to question royal authority or the articles of faith so if you if you said oh i don't like what the king is doing nope if you said oh i'm not quite i'm not quite sure i agree with grammar's book i'm not gonna follow it nope you had to you had to do it you had to follow the, the official thing and there was reason to speak against it the first prayer book was written in 1548, then in 1552, uh, uh, and the second one was, was published, which uh, removed all traces of uh, Catholicism, established a Eucharist, and all the prayers for the dead, relating to the Chantries Act, and the vestments, which I spoke about before, were removed, which was obviously, obviously very Protestant, as well as the Treason Act. So yeah, it just further destroyed anything Catholic remaining. This was very, very radical. And then the second act of uniformity, remember the first act of uniformity was right after the first prayer book, like the sec next year. This is still in 1552. And then it enforced the second book of common prayer and the AT had to uh, uh, attend the church. So usually after a prayer book comes an act of uniformity, ensuring that prayer book is Put in place, and yeah, <laughs> it, this is all very Protestant. This is a change in the government, and and after the new city government, that becomes even more radical. I'm not going to get into that because that's a whole of Edwardian government. But yeah. so the Black Rubric Proclamation that was in 1552. This is more neutral than. And anything else? So there was kneeling in communion for the sake of good, good order, which meant in the communion you had to kneel, which was had elements of uh, Protestantism because you know I mean it had a few elements of Protestantism. It did have some elements of Catholicism because it meant you were like kneeling to God and God was superior. And in fact, you should be like God is superior in Protestantism, but you feel connected. You don't need to go over the top to, to show your devotion. So that was, that was, that was, that was passed yeah, under Edwards, is more neutral, leaning to Catholic. And then that, after that, the 42 articles were submitted, which were based on Cranmer's uh, idea. Protestant, actually a Protestant. And then 1553, the year Edward died, so Edward only lived from, like he lived from 15, 37, 38, to 1553. He reigned from 1547 to 1553. Uh, that uh, hence the name of the boy king or the sick king. He died very young. I think it was age of 15. So. Yeah, 1538. And yeah. So now this short catechism that was uh, produced it was a manual for teaching of the beliefs. It was basically a how to preach at church. And it was just passed shortly before he died, and then he died, and then Mary came and just put all Catholicism onto the people. So this is that, that was a religious change itself. Now I'm going to talk about the impact this religious change had. So official figures state that 
of estimates of official figures say that 20% of Londoners were Protestant by 1547, which is a lot. It's not, it's not even close to halfway, but it's a significant portion. It's not like a 3% were Protestant. No, no, 20% of Londoners. Not, I'm not saying England, I'm saying London. Um, there were more, Protestantism was more, more common in the South. If you think about it, that's where the votes came, although the human, like, humanist literature and all the ideas, Protestantism did come from Germany, so, so, and it makes sense that the South was more Protestant and then London, which is in the South, would be Protestant. In the North, they were very Catholic, Scotland is very Catholic, then in York, that part too, and this didn't really change until Elizabeth. But, yeah, that's not, it's not like the country was divided, it's just, it's more common to be Protestant down south than up north. But, you know. And in the north, in the north it was still Catholic, and Masham, which is a small town, it still had its roots green in 1598. So 1598, that's five years before Elizabeth died. So that's, that's, um, I think. 1598 to 53, 5. That's 45 years after Edward died, if I'm calculating correctly. And that root screen is that screen that separates the church attenders from the altar. And that this was removed with uh, iconoclasm. So some churches uh, some like fam famously hid their icons and their statues. And this church kept its root screen. And it's not like Edward was going to come in and say, hey, what's that doing there? Take it down. Like if they didn't report it, and no one came. And Edward would never know, and no one would ever know. And they still kept it until Elizabeth told them to stop. So if you want to look at evidence for people's religions, you go to the wills, because these are where it's the final thing they do. So if you want to be, if you're Catholic, you're going to leave things to the Catholic Church. If you are a person, you're going to leave things to the person church. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, 32 wills in London were Protestant and 8% were in Durham and York. So, 32% in London, South, 8% in Durham and York. So, therefore, showing how the South, the South was more, was more Protestant. However, it doesn't really a measure of religion. Because most people just didn't leave wills. They, they weren't such a big thing back then. So only really the gentry, gentry and above had like, anything to actually leave. It's not like they were in common. It's like a peasant wouldn't have that much to give. So they just give it while they were still alive. There wasn't, there wasn't really that much to pass on. And if they did, they just gave it to the church before they died. So that there's not, no evidence of that. So, at the parish level, low level, it wasn't that much of a crisis. It was just a crisis. It wasn't that big a deal. There were no combats. There were no outright executions. It, it wasn't that significant it, in Edward's reign. In Mary it is. In Elizabeth it kind of is. Not really, but yeah. And then, but yeah, in Edward it's not that big a deal. Like in Kim the Seventh. It's not that notable. It is, but it's so if you were in society, you were just like, okay, finally Protestant now. Ugh. It's not like, oh no, I don't want to be Protestant. I want to be Catholic. I'm going to be, just be Catholic. I just went along with it. The churches weren't attracting enough money, and they weren't grand and fun. So you were Catholic, but you weren't that much of a strong Catholic, and you went to church, and it was all whitewashed. The walls were whitewashed. That's a practice of like painting the walls away. So you went in church, you had none of the statues, none of the ornaments. Everything was white and everything was boring. Like, mm, I don't want to go here. It's not like they didn't like Protestantism, it's just they, they, didn't, they weren't engaged into the, the new um, religious climate of sorts. So there were, in, priests had to be ordained. And that with Ed, in Edward's reign, there was a decline in ordination, which meant the church were lacking clergymen who were going to pass on the teachings of the church. That was almost like, like a crisis, but not a big one, as I said. 
and the like I said before, the churches said, "Hey, I don't want I don't want to remove my statues. I want to remove my my money." And who says I'm not going to get another monarch who's going to restore Catholicism? Like, but Mary, but they didn't know where it was. It happened, and they didn't know how much Edward was going to live. So what they did is they just hid everything, kept it under wraps, and when Edward died and Mary came to the throne, she said, "Oh, here England is Catholic." So they mm, put the things back up, and boom, Catholicism is again. So yeah, it's hard to assess as like, to what extent people were Protestant during Edward's reign. I'd say they weren't. It's not like they were. It's not saying that they were extremely Catholic. Just they went along. Normal people, they just wanted faith. They just relied on God. They didn't really. They weren't that passionate about which strata of religion to to follow. That was more of the nobility and the gentry, but peasants, the uh, just went along and said, "Oh, the king says we're Protestant. I'm Protestant. King says we're Catholic. Catholic. Just back and forth." And the wills are not that of a, uh, that much of a, like evidence to show that because not many people kept wills. There weren't that many, and yeah, the churches hid their stuff. So who's to say other churches just hid them and they were lost in time? And it's not like they took them, they removed them. It's just they hid them and then they lost them. So who knows? I honestly think the people weren't Catholic either. They were just going along with what the king said. But it looked it looked Protestant with a lot of Catholicism, but it's it wasn't that the people felt. So yeah, um, that's it. Thanks for watching.